It's time for your monthly content. Today we're going to be showing you how to make a fanfic into a hardcover book. I'm doing this because I'm extremely bored this summer and I'm willing to put myself through pain just for the end result. Good strawberries. Now, if you're noticing me reusing previous animation frames, one, no you're not, two, shut up, and let's start the process. We're going to start off by formatting our fanfic. This is the fanfic I got off from Arya, just the way it was. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the margins to 0 0.8. And we're going to have the orientation set as the landscape. Multiple pages is going to be book full. And sheets per booklet is going to be 32. This is the correct dimensions for the siding, so you're not going to have anything go in between the gutter. Next, we're going to go to layout. We're going to edit the header and the footer to be 0.35. This is so you have room at the top and bottom, and then we're going to hit OK, so we have everything set. Then we're going to adjust our paragraph setting. We're going to hit special first line, line spacing exactly, and we're going to edit them both. We're going to put first line by 0 0.3, exactly by 15 points, and we're going to hit the alignment to justify. We're going to make sure all of these boxes are checked. After we have the corrected format for our pages, usually after that happens, everything kind of breaks and the spacing's off. So here I'm just going in and correcting the spacings, anything that may break, such as the lines between the chapters and making sure that the numbers are correct. And then I'm also going in here and changing the text to one that is more condensed and I'm changing the sizing of the text as well. Because the fanfic is so long, I have to divide it into no matter what. So 1064 pages divided by 2, 527 page and count, divide that in half is how much we're going to do for each book. So I'm, here I'm going in and copying half of where it is just evenly drawn, copying it, putting it into another document. Now in the separate document, I have to change the page number so it matches up fleshly with the table of contacts. Once that's all done, all editing, happy with it, we're going to go ahead and export it to a PDF file. Opening up the PDF files in a, the free version of Adobe Acrobat, all we have to use is the printing settings. In the print settings, all you have to change is pages to print. We're going to do the first page to 32, hit the booklet setting, and it should automatically change sheets from 1 to 8, and then you go by 32. The next printing after that will be 33 to 64. Once you have all your pages printed and ready to go, separate and organized, what we're going to do is start folding our signatures. The tool I'm using to create the signatures is called a bone tool. Each signature has to be lined up to the number or the page number for each one. Here's my fancy way of a book press, just two pieces of wood with two clamps. Put the first one in there just so it can set while I do the other book. After they're all folded, we're going to start with the first text block. You're going to divide it in half, and then you're going to keep dividing it in half until you have seven lines. And we're going to make gouges with them. I made them with an X-Acto knife, so... Here you're going to see me do what is called a kettle, kettle stitch for this first...
first text block. I honestly cannot tell you how to do this, so I'm going to leave a link in the description to show you to a video to show you how to do it. I followed it step by step, and I got this beautiful text block done. And here I'm going to show you my favorite method of creating a text block. You need a stapler, staples, an eraser. What you're going to do is put the eraser at the back of the spine of your signature. You're going to plunge three staples, one at the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom. And then you're going to turn it over and bend the staples into place. And then you have your signature. This is a lot more easier than kettle stitching and really more accessible. Next, you're going to see me gluing our spine and then putting a piece of book cloth. You can use really any type of lacy cloth. Next, we're going to create our text block cover. You put a little line of glue at the edge of the text block. You take a piece of hard stock and you're going to place it exactly lining up and then you have your text block cover. Do this for both of, the, of your text blocks. Here I have an 8x11 chipboard. I'm going to be dividing that in half. This is going to be making up our hard cover for our text blocks. Make sure to measure your spine of your text block correctly so you don't end up with it being too short, too big. That can end up the final process and if you have a print design like I do in just a little bit, you're going to see how it kind of messes it up. And you want to make sure that you're labeling your front and back so you're not going to get confused in the, in the later process. On the print design, I'm lining out the chipboard to make sure it matches up with the design. And then I'm going to be taking our chipboard, I'm going to be gluing it to the design. And then you're going to let that weight dry out, make sure that there's carefully no bubbles. We're going to use the bone tool that we've been using to carefully spread out that glue so there's no bubbles. Once the chipboard is dry, what we're going to do is clip the edges to sort of um, an angle. This is so the corners lay neatly and crisp. And then what we're going to do is glue the bottom of the chipboard and you're going to fold inwards on the print design so it lays flush. You're going to use a bone tool to smother out any bubbles that the glue may create. You can do this for all sides. Congratulations, you have your first hardcover. Once it's dry, you're going to glue one side of the chipboard, just the chipboard, and then on the text block, you're going to be gluing the outer layer. Make sure to have a piece of paper in between your text block cover so the pages do not get glued in this process. And then you're going to carefully lay this onto your heart cover. Smother out any glue bubbles with your bone tool. And then you're going to do the exact same thing to the other side of the hard cover. Glue only the chipboard and then the edges of your text block cover. And then boom, you have your first booklet. Once you're done with your first booklet, all you're going to do is put it into a book press and let it dry a good 24 hours before you handle it or anything like that. And then we are going to move on to our second half of the fanfic. We're going to go through the same process, measure out your chipboard to 
your print design. Here I'm just cutting it a little bit shorter just so it fits onto the chipboard nicely. Glue the chipboard onto the design, let it dry, don't do what I just did here. And then glue down the edges toward to your second hard cover. And once you have your second hard cover, we can move on to gluing it to the second text block. And then, yeah, I don't have another book press, so I just made a makeshift thing. I'm just putting it under heavy books. You can see there's a sneak peek up there too. And after letting it dry for a good 24 hours, I put on some metal book corners. All you have to do is just put it on the edge, get a pair of pliers, or just use your fingers and clamp those suckers onto the corner. And then you have nice metal covers! They look very pretty, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really happy with this. I'm glad Aria allowed me to make this and I'm so glad to share this with everybody.